Welcome to Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons epic fantasy adventure. My name is Alex and I'll be your host and Dungeon Master. On the Great Isle, it is a time of religious wars, imperial domination, and an ancient evil reborn. Only one crew can save the world from utter destruction. They are... Magrain Silverbeard, Paladin of St. Delegis. Zalara Tremez, Wandering Elven Monk. Gerin Kelp, High Elf Bladesinger. To do that, Simic Hybrid Rogue Warlock. All right. Who wants to let us know what happened last episode? So last time we were in the Feywild and we went to Oberon and he wanted us to cure the issue of his stinky swamp witch. So we hatched a plan to get the uh, satyr stick to go and fall in love with the swamp witch. And we got Oberon's um, magic people, whose name I forgot, that looked like a goat or something. Top. Top. A donkey. Donkey. Specifics. Uh, so I got, we went and got uh, him all uh, magicked up and basically roofied him to fall in love with the stinking witch. And we took him to the uh, the stinking swamp and got them to all be in lovey doveyness with each other. And then uh, went back to Oberon and took a trampoline back to the uh, the woods. And uh, they were all burned. And that's where we ended, in the snowy burned woods. That's right. So you are in the snowy burned woods. Now you know your way back to Sin El Nur. You hear suddenly drums in a scream you look up and you see a man wearing the armor of a red hand come running through the forest at you yelling run an arrow pierces him through the back of the neck you see a centaur come riding out margraine you recognize him and he's also yelling run you hear the wings beat and flying up over the burnt forest, you see two wyverns, both with riders on their back, carrying staves. Unlike the last time, you see fire being shot from their mouths. Zalara, your soul sapling wraps around your wrist, pierces the heart of Hathor on your hand, and shoots into the ground. You're consumed by roots once again, and suddenly you see Shamhara all around you, not as a person, but as the interconnectedness of the world itself. And you pull back and you see the realm of Akashic, which is all realms. Everything is connected. All planes, all, all the multiple realities. And at the heart of everything is Shamhara, is your world. And you find yourself flying through time. What the rest of you see is she's overtaken by these vines. She looks almost like a tree in the ground, except you can see her eyes still moving around and some breathing. So what we're going to do... Everybody give me an initiative roll. Duke. 16. 23. 14. 8 because I'm a tree. Okay. So, uh, Zalara, you saw that just happen, um, and we're back in the real world. You guys see Zalara, as I mentioned before, looks like a tree, basically, except for you can see her eyes. You can see a little bit of her skin poking through, but she is firmly planted in the ground. Um, going to let you know that she will be stuck here for six turns. Oh, God. Ooh. All right. So you see Zalara trapped as a tree. You've got six turns um, with her being out of service here. Completely? Maybe less. Um, what's that? Completely. You'll have things going on too. Oh, I need you to roll initiative as well. I did. did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. No, you're I've... not just sitting there. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, so um, you have who Margarine would recognize as Cam Bonetooth come rushing out of the woods. You do see a couple of other, what you would know as his rangers behind him. Arrows are flying, black arrows. You know that there are some of the um, Marat Hall soldiers back there. You see the Waverns in the air, and you hear the stomping on the ground of two larger creatures. It looks almost, or um, they're, they're making their way through the woods, but it looks as if some scribes had gotten a hold of a couple of giants and made them some more of Marat Hall's soldiers. Oh, fun. So, Garen, it's your turn to begin. <sighs> okay. First thing, bonus action blade song to give me a little boost. Second thing, just gonna go all out. I'm casting Big Big B's hand, and as I cast it, I'm going to use its forceful hand feature and smack the rider off of um, this wyvern. Okay, and you can reach it? Yeah, it's 120 feet. Nice. So we have to make a 
strength or athletics contest. Okay. So uh, I think that's which one do I use? I guess they're the same. So twenty three. Wow. Attack. I was like, get ready. I rolled some gangbusters there. I rolled a twenty one. <laughs> All right, so he is now pushed um, five feet plus a number of feet equal to five times my spell casting modifier, which is five times. So he's knocked 25 feet away from where he is currently at. He's knocked 25 feet? Yeah, so I assume off the liver. All right, completely taken by surprise, not expecting a caster of your ability on the field. Um, The scribe on the back gets hit and is knocked to the ground and will take some damage there. So, all right. And then my hand follows it, so. Follows it, so, okay. Follows the caster, so. All right, he's on the ground. So now it is the soldiers of Murat Hall's turn. Um, And I also- Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I wanna move into the tree line, hoping to give myself some cover. Absolutely. All right, and are you done, Garen? I am now done. Okay, so it is now the soldier's turn, and should be able to. All right, we're gonna have a couple charge in. <laughs> All right, one is gonna attack you, uh, Mr. Margrain. Okay. Doesn't know what he's in for. All right, swings once with his long sword. Uh, nine is gonna miss. Yes. 24. Hit. All right, take four slashing damage. Okay. Watch it. Yep. And then watch out, um, these guys are big hitters. Then they attack one of um, Cam's Rangers and take him down to actually, they attack uh, three of them, jump on Cam's Rangers, attack him, and take him out. All right. And let's see. I'm going to guess that a 10 misses you, Dulod. Uh, yeah, 10 misses. Okay. You see an arrow go flying past your head. How about an 18? Uh, 18 just misses. Okay. Nice. So the, they miss. All right. You see four more converge on another one of Cam's Rangers and take them out. All right. It is now your turn, Margrain Silverbeard. Okay. Um, Margrain Silverbeard is going to reach out a hand to Zalara, who's now a tree next to him. He's going to cast Sanctuary on her as a bonus action. Okay. Okay. And then he's going to close his eyes for a second and go, okay. It's all or nothing. And spirit guardians. Um, spirit guardians burst forth from uh, Margrain in a 15 foot radius all around him. Um, and basically things that are hostile towards me that go into the area take uh, right now 11 radiant damage. Oh, nice. Okay. And, and, that, and that lasts for uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Um, and anything that enters a 15 foot radius around me me also takes that um, oh, okay. so I'll, I'll roll it when it happens okay that is margraine's turn all right uh Dulad, it's now your turn man okay uh do that so he's his bonus action to summon his weapon but he's used improved packed weapons so instead of a rapier it's now a longbow Ooh. and he will then he will then also move oh, yeah, that's cool. he'll then move 20 feet back for safety purposes and take <laughs> two shots at the rider still on his wyvern on the right hand side okay first one is a 15 okay so uh, um, that a, will miss. Second one is a natural 20. Oh, nice. Go ahead. 27 damage. Nice. And that will be my turn. Okay, cool. All right. Well, you definitely gained his attention. Um, it is now your turn. Uh, the two, uh, three rangers that are left. Um, so that one's going to run there. He's going to run up with his buddies. They're not uh, messing around here. Okay. So they're all just running. All right. Zalara, you've flown through time. You see a world fresh and young around you. You see a beautiful young woman, or maybe she's a young man or both. You realize it's harmony, male and female, heaven and earth. Shamhara, suddenly there's a boom a rip all of reality ripped and is torn and you see coming through this rip in reality a very bedraggled beautiful woman she she's an angel you see she has wings but they're broken bent in half and she just comes running into this reality there are dark hands coming from the void trying to grip her she runs up to you you realize that you are now shamhara and she says please help me uh what, what can I do for you? Please, he's coming for me. He's been chasing me. He's become completely obsessed with me. He's so powerful. I didn't think anybody from his realm could find us, but he, he's he's come for me. Who Who is he? I'm not sure his name. Or he, his name changes. He, he's a, a creature of many faces. Loki? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, what, uh, uh, what was he last look like to you? 
He just looked like a man, an ordinary man who had somehow mastered the, the ability to, to come into our realm. And he saw me from afar and he just became obsessed with me. He wants me to be his wife. And what's your name? My name is Tana. Tana? Tana. Tana Hano. And from the rip, you see a large figure come. He's wearing the robes like a wizard would. In his hand, he has a circular disc. It is rotating. Many different colors are springing off of it. But he has no face. Just completely black. And he raises his hand out to you. Obviously, some magic is coming out. You go first on initiative. What would you like to do? I... I, I, mm, I uh... Become an axe. Okay. <laughs> That's my response anymore. Um, okay. What does the world around me look like? Am I just floating free in space? No, you're you're on this planet. Uh, it looks foreign to you, though. It's very fresh. It's beautiful. Uh, you're on your world, the world of the okay. Great Isle, though. It's it's different. It's early. It's young. And I'm Shamhara. But you're also you. So your so stats have, are you. My stats are me. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I have a wizard type guy. How far away from me is he? He'd be 60 feet. 60 feet in front of me. Um, where is Tana? She's directly in front of you. Okay. Um, I'm going to move like around to protect her and be like 10 feet in front of her. And then 60 feet away. Can't get there. Um... Uh, um, I'll try Moonbeam, mm -hmm. I guess. Tell me what Moonbeam does, because I don't know. Uh, let one. me read it. A silvery light, a silvery beam of pale light shines down in a five foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder centered on a point within range, which is 120 feet. Um, until the spell ends, dim light fills the cylinder. When the creature enters the spell's area for the first time or starts its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain and must make a constitution saving throw. It takes 2d10 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. A a shape changer uh, must make it saving throw with disadvantage. So if he's a shape changer of some sort. So what kind of saving throw is it? Constitution. And the spell save is 16. Okay. Oh, 15. Nice. nice. So if he's a shape changer, he immediately, if he fails it, he has to revert back to his original shape, I think. Let me double check this. If it fails, he also instantly reverts back to its original form and can't assume a different form until it leaves the spell's light. Okay. So you see a, uh, it looks almost like a human. Well, it looks like a human there standing in front of you. He's tall, um, actually very handsome, a little bit older, say a guy in his um, early 40s, salt and pepper beard and, and hair piercing blue eyes not somebody you recognize okay so i don't know who this is no nope. and he says oh my lamb you thought you could escape from me you, you've be, become hurt outside of my care and now you have this horrible person trying to take you away from me we can't have that now can we i just wanted to see your true form who are you who are you i am the walker between worlds the finder of planes you you let me find my thing what do I currently look like? <laughs> Am I a tree here? <laughs> Am I? You kind of look like the male female form that was Shamhara. Oh, okay. So I'm androgynous. Um, yep. I am Shamhara. I am this existence, this plane. You're not welcome here. Didn't you hear who I said I was? I'm the walker between worlds. I'm welcome anywhere. All right. Go ahead and give me a DC 17 dex check. Uh, save or check? Save. 23. Oh, all nice. right. <laughs> Lucky you. So, okay. Um, take 18 points of lightning damage as a lightning bolt shoots from his hand and hits you. Okay. And we're going to move next in turn order. We have the Uber Wyverns out there flying, or Wyvern, however you'd like to say it. And first things up, the one of the Wyverns with the sorcerer, or the uh, scribe still on his back, breathes his fire breath out at, it's going to be uh, Cam and Margraine will be in the line of fire there. Give me a DC 15 dex check. Okay. Seven. <laughs> Ooh, cam rolls a 14. Okay. So both of you take 35 points of fire damage. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend my channel divinity on Rebuke the Violent. I need him to make a wisdom saving throw. 
probably a pretty good thing to have them make. No, no, actually fairly wise. <laughs> okay. Oh, you guys can't see that one. Uh, it rolled a uh, critical failure, so no, okay. I got two whole points. So he takes that entire amount of damage. Oh, damn. Okay. Um, you said 35? All right. So, um, yeah, the wyvern screams in pain, not happy with what just happened is going to actually shoot up into the air higher up. The other one will swoop down low into the trees and land next to his fallen rider. All right, uh, Cam Bonetooth, who is in some pain, says uh, as he's running past, it's good to see you again, little friend. We must run. Oh, no. Um, uh, uh, Margaret's going to yell out, no, my friend's stuck. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's all I know. I don't know. She's having a metaphysical experience for six rounds. Um, <laughs> to be fair, you don't know how long it's going to be. Yes, I, 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 I said I don't know. So, yeah. My friend's a tree. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, he stops and, and looks at you. He turns around. Um, he's got his bow out and he'll fire a couple of times. What do I have two long swords? In oh, Cam. <sighs> there we go. All right, he rolls a 17, a 10. One goes wild and a 26. So that's going to be 15 points of damage. And all right. Oops. All right. Okay. So that's his turn, Garen. It's back around the horn to you, man. So turn two. Okay. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to have Big B's hand uh, attack the, uh, um, what is his face? The, the mouth of Sauron guy. Okay, the scribe. Yeah, which one is that? Clenching, clenched fist. 20. 20 hits. For 19 force damage. Oh, man. And what's the range on that? 30 feet? 60 feet. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure that's right. Okay, I'm going to cast Grease on on these four guys right here. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'll get them. Uh, so they have to make deck save or fall prone uh, DC 17 they rolled a 4 alright so they all fall prone and let's see where's that wyvern at I think I will move away sorry I can't I will move to this tree here okay so you run into a patch of trees yep okay and you're behind Cam and some of his rangers at this point okay sounds good all right, uh, so this Uber Scribe is going to get onto his Wyvern and then going to. Let's see. Uh, would I get an attack of opportunity against him? Why? With my, with my hand. Oh, is that how that would work? I mean, it's a part of me. It, it's as of, if you are there? Yeah, I mean, well, because it, it moves with my hand, so I don't know. I mean, it, like, I, it mimics What's my hand. on it again? Okay, you create a large hand of shimmering translucent force in an unoccupied space that you can see within range. The hand lasts for a spell's duration. It moves at your command, mimicking the movements of your own hand. Um, and so does, since you can hit with it, it's like you are there. I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah. Cool. If we're wrong, we'll fix it later. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bam. Crit for oh. 32 damage. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Damn. Damn. Because I get 48 force damage out of that. So. Whoa. It's a fifth level spell. Yeah. Well, he is hurting. Good. <laughs> and very upset. And let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he's hurting very upset. And it shoots out from its staff of lightning bo- bolts a lightning bolt. And it's going to uh, give me a DC 16. Uh, um, what is it? Oh, it's dex check. Yeah, sorry. Who? Garen. Oh, okay. wait. Actually, it would be everybody within that range there, right? So nope. do I get any protection from the trees? Not in this case. Fine. If it were normal attack, thanks, sure. Lightning bolt is in a straight line. So. Yep. So that will be... Oh, Zalar is going to automatically fail it. And then Cam I and his failed ranger. as well. Take 36 points of lightning damage. Okay, I'm going to burn my last channel divinity. Make a wisdom saving throw for me, please. By the way, um, Cam, I should have told you, you're going to need to keep track of two sets of health points here. Okay, good. (laughs) Those don't stack. Um, what, What do I need to roll? Wisdom? Wisdom saving throw. DC 15. 15 exactly okay so um you take half of that damage all right so he shoots off the lightning bolt it goes through it kills one of Cam's soldiers hits cam let's see does it do for god damn it tam um yep <laughs> a second um this map's so big i gotta scroll out and scroll in like crazy 
How much damage was it I took as tree me? 36. 36. Okay, thank you. Well, that's what I just did. Was that what she had as well? Did I take more than that before? No, Hold that's on. the first damage you've taken. Oh, that's the first okay. damage you took. I see what you're saying. Yes, 36. Um, so. Does she have resistance because she's a tree? Oh, break. actually, uh, it. Ooh, no, that's an AoE attack. Never mind. Sanctuary doesn't count, yeah. Yeah. Good try. Okay. These things are going to have a hard time swinging at you. But, okay. so it rips through there, hits Cam, kills one of his rangers and hurts Garen as well as Zalara. But thanks to Margraine's, um, whatever it's called, what is it, Channel Divinity. Rebuke the, the Violent. Rebuke the Violent. It comes back and actually kills the scribe himself. Nice. One down. All right. And the other okay. scribe is up in the air with the Wyvern. They're high up in the sky. You can't see either one currently, um, thanks to the heavy clouds from the snow. Okay. We're going to have yeah, one. I think I can. Yep. I got a fire. Okay. So. Um, okay. All of those upon entering 15 feet of me do need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. So, yeah. Three soldiers come up to you. And, and the fourth one who's still there. And the fourth one who's still there. Uh, what is it again? DC 15. Uh, wisdom saving throw. DC 15. Uh, okay. Or take 11 damage, half on the successful. They all take 11. Okay. Yes. So they're all at, well, 11, since this keeps copying things over. I'm not sure why. Okay. Uh, so those are all at 11. Now they will attack you. So one swings at you. Um, 18 does it, does 18 hit? No, it does not. All right. Two swings and a miss, or two swings and two misses. The other one, uh, does a 19 hit you? No, it does not. All right. And one swings his sword and throws it. <laughs> And the fourth one is behind, so he shoots off his longbow. Um, at disadvantage, I rolled a 21. That just hits. All right, take eight points of damage. And then he fires again, and it goes way off. So super effective, really scary soldiers. <laughs> I don't know. Between everybody, they've got me down to less than half. That's how I felt about my fire newts, for what it's worth. I'm less Shoot. than half in one hit, so. <laughs> oh, no. You said 15 feet, right? Yep. So you've got five more that come rushing in, and I think one of them enters the square. Is that right? Uh, all three of those to the far oh, left. Three of them do. Okay. So, th uh, yeah, five more come rushing in. Three of them do need to make that same saving throw against your... What do they look like? Uh, I would picture them. They're probably angelic beings. Okay. Uh, I, I don't... You tell me what they look like because they're manifestations of my deity's uh, followers. Oh, is that what they are? Okay. They're, they're so, yeah. spiritual guardians manifested from my own faith. Okay. So, yeah, they... Uh, you do have, uh, I guess they're angelic looking, multiple races, all of them carrying hammers because they follow um, Saint Elite Saint Elegis? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, all three of those fail. Um, a six, a 14, and a two. So they uh, are I already all, rolled it, so 11. 11 damage. So they're also all at half. Nice. Okay. So these, but they all do get a turn. So let's see. Um, so the the four I greased here, I think is here. Oh, yeah, they the, can only the, move 15 feet. Ooh. So. So I think they're back like like here is the last spot that those yeah. four could have moved to. Yep, you're absolutely right. So that's right. So five of them came up and we'll say this guy could do it because I'm going to give it to the players. So yeah. three of the three of the five actually couldn't make it uh, more than 15 feet. Let's see. Oh, yeah. OK, so they are going to all six of them are going to unleash, unleash a bunch of arrows. Um, four of them fire at four arrows come out at cam from two of them um, Two come out at Dulod. One hits with a critical hit. Take seven points of damage. <laughs> Like that kind of critical. Okay. All right. Uh, one may hit Margraine. Does a 20 hit you? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. And then um, one more will go ahead and hit Cam for 20. It's a 25 for four whole points of damage. I should have maybe upped these guys' damage since the last time you fought them. Don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I guess you are all hurting pretty bad now anyway. All right. So, uh, Margraine, it is now your turn. Okay. Um, the guys around me. What am I going to do? <laughs> 
Let's do some stuff. Um, I'm just gonna swing out at the guys next to me because that cool. sounds like the best way to do it. Actually, what I'll do is I'll burn my once per day, my armor of Saint Allegius, my third level of it, to regain half my hit points. So I regain 37 hit points. Nice. Bringing me up to 65. Okay, not too bad. And then I am going to swing at the one directly in front of me. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming a 10 doesn't hit him. No. <laughs> I'm going to swing again. Does a 25 hit him? 25 hits him. Okay. And I do 11 bludgeoning damage. All right. You kill him. Okay. And that is my turn, I guess. <laughs> All right. Dulod, your turn, buddy. What, what are you doing? Dulod's going to move 20 feet to the side. And he's going to shoot uh, the two guys next to my brain on the left. These ones. Okay, cool. So the one directly next to my brain will take uh, 25 to hit. Yep, for sure. Uh, it takes 10 and plus my sneak attack. He's an extra ally. An extra four, so 14 damage. All right, he is dead. And the guy behind him, uh, 27 to hit. Yep. With seven piercing damage. Okay. No sneak attack on that one? I can only get a one to Time, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Cool. So he's hurting. I'm not being me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. It is now your turn, Rangers. This guy's dead. And they're going to try and help out here. All right. So uh, one of them finishes off the guy that Dula just hit with one arrow. Oh my God. Doesn't matter. Um, and then the other one hits the other one for 10 points, not quite killing him, but really, really hurting him. So, um, and then the other ranger will do the same and try and fire, try and clear people off of, oh, critical failure, breaks his bow, and that will end his turn. All right, Zalara, <laughs> we are, you're still facing the man who calls himself the walker between the worlds or between the planes. What do you want with her, with Tana? She's my bride-to-be. What do you mean, what do I want with her? She completes me and I complete her. Together, we will make worlds. She does not consent, and I run forward and attempt to stab him with my short sword. Nice. Da -da 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 -da. I scrolled way back up. That's a 25 to hit. Yep, that hits. For four piercing. That Okay, four piercing. <sighs> okay, and then a second attack. Same thing with the short sword. That's a nine. I'm guessing that misses. That's not it. And then I'm going to spend a key point to, to unarmed attack him. So I'm dropping my sword to the side and I'm going to attempt to roundhouse kick him in the face for 18 Hits. to hit. That's for five bludgeoning. And this is all magical, by the way, because yeah. I'm there. Um, and then I am going to, once I've come back to my stance in my roundhouse, out of my roundhouse kick, I'm going to take my right fist and also aim at his face for my second of my flurry of blows for 16 to hit. Okay, uh, 16 meets. Oh, good. So that's another four bludgeoning damage. And I am going to attempt to stun him with that one. Uh, so he needs to make a... Uh, DC 16, uh, da, 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 what is it? Isn't it constitution? It is a constitution save, yes. Or be stunned. Oh, 15. Awesome. All right. And what does that and do? And if he hasn't moved yet, he also should have taken another 2d10's worth of damage unless he makes a con save against the moonbeam. Oh. Because that's at the start of his turn. And how many? How much worth damage? It's 2d10. So he has to make another con save. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Oh, nope. <laughs> you definitely did that. <laughs> Okay, um, so I don't know if you want to retroactive that, but um, 11 for this time for sure. Okay, all right. So let me make sure that turn you did how many points of damage? You did 11? 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13. What? And Stunned. Oh, plus the moonbeam. Plus the moonbeam. So that's oh. 13, 25, and he's stunned. Right. Okay, cool. So just so you know, what's stunned. A stunned creature is incapacitated, can't move, it can only speak falteringly, fails, automatically fails strength and dex saves, and attack rolls have advantage against it. All right. So what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to let you go again because he's incapacitated. So Awesome. Um she does not consent to being your bride. She cannot complete you. And I'm going to short sword him again, I guess. Oh, I get advantage. Uh, 17 to hit. Uh, yeah. Which hits for five piercing. And then 25 to hit. Yep. For another three piercing. And he's incapacitated. So let's do more flurry of blows. 14 to hit. That does not, right? 
No. 16 met. But that is a critical to punch him in his smug little face for 13 points of damage. Okay, so that's an additional nine. Stun him again. 12. Um, man, you're doing some serious damage to this guy. Okay. Uh-huh. So, all and right. then I'm stunning him again. So roll con. Okay. 16 is the number to beat. I rolled a one. I rolled a two last time. I rolled a one this time. <laughs> What was it? Moonbeam. Yeah. Well, does he get another turn? Because it's at the start of his turn. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and say, yeah, because he's incapacitated. There's nothing he can do. So uh, DC 13? 16. Okay. So he rolled a 13. So another eight points of damage. Correct. <laughs> All right. I'm very okay. protective of women trying to run away from abusive men. <laughs> All right. And I'll give you one more round because he's stunned again. Awesome. Do, do, do. 17 for four with yep. my short sword. 22 for another five. And we'll just key it up, yo. Do another unarmed attack for 22 to hit. And yep. one more roundhouse kick to the face for four bludgeoning. That's 25 to hit, sorry. Wow. Uh, Let's see this. Okay, is that, is that everything? I, I could stun him again, but I- You should, do it. Should? Even, yeah. Oh, well, okay, fine. Try it one more time. <laughs> Six. Awesome. You want Moonbeam again since we're doing that, I guess? Yeah, do one more. Da, 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 da. And that's five. Eleven. Okay. So with the last power of the Moonbeam, you see his body start to um, shred away like it's turned into vapors in the Moonbeam itself. The disc he was holding in his hands falls into the earth. It's gobbled up. It, it looks like the steam is sucked back through the rip of time and you're standing there with Tana. And we'll go back to the fight. Um, so we've got some very unhappy wyverns. Is he within the 15 foot space there? No, he's not. He's just outside. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So wyverns coming in and he's going to breathe fire once again. And Mr. Margrain, it'll go through and hit Cam as well. And a number of dead bodies along the way also. So go ahead and give me a DC 15 reflex save. Or I'm sorry, reflex save. What is this? Three um, <laughs> dex save. Well, speaking of three, that's a three on my dexterity save. Oh, wow. You sure you don't want to do like wisdom or charisma or something? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. I. <laughs> All right. Take 43 points of damage. Okay. Goodbye, the health I just got back. Yeah, it's... Cam will also take the full brunt of the 43 points of damage. Is Cam almost done? Uh, yeah, he's he's got to like be looking 15, real bad. He's got about 15 points of health left. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Well, you didn't die encountering us last time, Cam, but you might not look out this time. All right, and that's the Wyvern's turn. Uh, it's Cam's turn, and he's going to, realizing how much pain he's in, going to run into some of the woods to try and get some cover. And But being a soldier to the end, he's going to fire off his longbow a few times, trying to kill a couple of, at least, oh yeah. Well, with one, he's able to take out a one who had been injured completely, and he misses with... Oh, he gets three though. He misses completely with his second bow and he fires again. Nine. So actually that'll kill the other one who was hurt by your spiritual friends there. So though he's hurt, he's charred. He was able to take out two of them. It is now your turn, Mr. Garen. Okay. Um, well, all right. Uh, as a bonus action, I will move Big B's hand to go after the wyvern and smack him for 22 to hit. The wyvern or the rider? The rider's dead, so. Oh, that's right, yeah. The, I'm, I'm sorry, this, the the first one. Right. Uh, that's 17 force damage. Nice. As my regular action, I will move up five feet. I will cast, because I got nothing else, um, frostbite on the wyvern. Okay. So, <laughs> has to make a DC 17 con save or take two full damage. Gonna roll to 16, so he's gonna take, I guess, the full thing, right? Man. The full cold, two cold damage, and he has disadvantage on his next attack. Oh, that's good. He's down to uh, 16 uh, health points, though. So, well, out of 110, something. you guys have done something to him. Done quite a bit, actually. All Ooh. right. And then I will uh, move. Uh, I really wanna move really far away. Yeah. I. Okay. Yeah, I'll just hide behind the tree again. All right. In the oh. trees, I guess. 
Um, let's see, these guys... Uh, so two soldiers, one runs up to one of the rangers who's still active. Uh, another follows close behind him and has his bow drawn. I'm going to get a few more. Cool, both of those need to make wisdom saving throws. Yeah, let me, let me get everybody in place first and then okay. we'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, how many of those? Oh, wait. I got these guys over here. Just so many soldiers. I keep forgetting about them. <laughs> Stand on top of his dead brethren. All right. So uh, how many of them? Everybody. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's roll for spirit guardians. All right. Your spirit guardians come out with their hammers galore. Oh, They're going to attack six. Um, six of the what, six of the eight who have charged up. We've got um, the ones I described before. We've got four, uh, three more behind them. Um, one who's coming up right on Zilara. We've got two more who are surrounding Margraine. And another third one has come up with his bow drawn and ready, ready to overtake you guys so and they all get smashed by the spirit guardians and that's a dex or con or what was it wisdom roll to five so uh they all take the five points of damage six points six points of damage um and then they're gonna start going the one who uh is right up against the ranger um swings hits once twice kills the that ranger uh, doesn't matter he's dead why won't let me select kills that ranger okay then we've got uh, the one behind him who's going to fire his arrow at um, Garen, who he can see in the woods, but he does it at disadvantage. 14, I'm assuming, doesn't hit. That's a miss. And a nine, I'm guessing, will miss as well if that did. So that's that one didn't go so well. Another one's going to fire. The one behind him will fire his arrow at Margraine. 19. Does not hit. 23. Uh, does hit. Eight points of damage. Let's see. The one behind him also has his bow out, seeing that Mar. Ooh, Margraine is uh, already becoming something of a prickly pear. Shoots at him with his longbow. Twenty-three. Yep. Uh, nine points of damage, and then a ten, so that wildly flies off. Uh, one is going to attack Zalara, who's just there, so she didn't. Uh, have much so they need to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, the one. Okay, rolled a ten. I'm guessing I miss. Yep, they do not attack Zalara. Does not attack Zalara. He gets up there and he's like, "That is a pretty tree." Um, <laughs> The two who are next to Margraine swing with their sword. One, 24. Yeah. Take nine points of damage. Uh, Margraine's down. All right. He swings again and um, misses because it goes over Margraine's head as he falls to the ground. Um, this one back here, seeing Margraine has fallen, is going to unleash his arrow. Boom. 21 at Cam. 25 at Cam. Both have hit. Takes 13 points of damage. Cam is down to two points. All righty, it is now Margraine Silverbird's turn. Let's get me that death saving throw, buddy. 18. Nice. Okay. Dulod, your turn, man. Okay. Um, He's going to move further back again, and he's going to take a shot at the guy standing over Margraine's port. Okay. Slowly dying body for 23. Hits. Uh, 13 damage plus 2d6. Kills him. And the uh, one behind him. Okay. Uh, 15. Hits. Or eight pits. That kills him as well. Super. And that is me. Okay. All right. Dulas is picking them off one by one. And just so that we know, um, even though Margraine is unconscious, the spirit guardians disappear, but Sanctuary stays up. That's up oh, for good. an hour irregardless. Oh, nice. Okay. Just thought we would throw that out there. It's not a sure. concentration spell. It's just an effect. Is irregardless like regardless? Uh, yeah, regardless. Whatever. <laughs> Your dick. All right. So um, the ranger is going to fire at the one, um, this guy, uh, the last guy who, the last uh, ancient soldier who's left. Uh, fires one for a 13. No, that's a miss. Uh, fires again with a 26. That's 10 points of damage, killing him. All right. Now we go to um, another world. Actually, the same world, another time. So that man is gone and. Zalara, Shamhara's Zalara still, you flash. Suddenly, you're in the future. You see the universe has come to the plane you're on. You see it is also looking for that strain. You're the man who walks between worlds. You know that even though you defeated him a while back, the man who walks between worlds has come again and again to you, to the heart of all existence, searching for Tana, who is constantly hiding herself and fighting. And you fight alongside her many times, but he comes back stronger and stronger, stronger and stronger. So when the universe comes, it's an immense thing. It bursts into the plane. It holds out a ring of fire and offers it to Tanahano. She's clearly not thrilled with the idea of taking it, but 
She's tired of fighting, tired of asking you for help. Her wings are grown back and broken and grown back and broken over time. So she takes the ring and she puts it on and she starts to change. Her skin becomes red. Her wings become whole again, black dragon-like. Her feet become hooves. She's still beautiful, but now she's terrifying. And you see a large, strong form of someone you've seen before. You see Anatona standing in front of you. And she takes that disc that the first man who walked between planes dropped, and she spins it. She casts spells. And you see as she opens up multiple gates, knowing that Shamhara is the center of all. You flash again, and you see Anatana has raised the men you see before you, the original men. They live in a society all ruled by her and ruled by that great universe. You see other gods come through the gates, and a war appears between her people and the people of the new gods. She takes out her rib and a finger of Tadaman, and she buries it in the ground, and she makes Marat Hall from her. You see more wars as these new people come, and they all look similar to elves, dwarves, gnomes with their new gods and she raises a huge amount of the land above the rest to protect herself and her people and you feel the pain of Shamhara as she screams in torture as this land is ripped up. There are more wars and soon all the people of the new gods are dead. Anat Ana rejoices with Murat Hall drinking and dancing. They get close. You flash to the future and you see her giving birth to a young red-skinned black-eyed black-haired girl. As this girl grows you recognize her as Aruna. The new gods are slowly fading out of existence without people, so they create new people from the ground. Dwarves, elves, mins, goblins, orcs, and they all look like people you recognize. You see a war that rages. They try and climb up this great plateau where Natana lives and Murat Hall reigns. A god battles a dragon in the sky and the god rips his heart open and smashes it into a hundred pieces falls to the ground. People take these pieces and they're able to fight her soldiers better. The world begins to flood. The new people crawl up the Great Plateau. They battle, but they're not sure they can win. And we're going to go to the Wyvern's turn. And he's going to fly over and let's see. I'm going to go to the one who's caused him and his master all that trouble. Hi, Gary. Fl- flying above. Oh, does Big B's hand get an attack of opportunity? Yep. Nice. Please kill him. 16 to hit. Yeah, that actually hits. Nine force damage. Oh, that's oh, so two close. Ones. It takes 50% of his damage. And now the Wyvern. So it's going to drop its stinger down at you. It's got disadvantage because of frostbite. Yeah. Um, it drops its stinger down at you. And all right, here, we're going to... It critically failed. So oh, here's nice. what's going to happen. <laughs> one or two. What do you want? Two. Darn it. Okay. So we rolled a one. I was going to say it just hits itself and kills itself. But in this case, it swings its stinger down at you. You dodge out of the way. You get stuck in a tree and it is down, stuck into that tree. It loses the rest of its turn and we'll have to spend the next turn pulling itself out. Nice. <laughs> Cam Bonetooth's turn. He's going to pull out his um, longbow and fire it at the Wyvern. Oh, critical hit, 27, and that is 13 points of damage. It kills the Wyvern stuck in the tree. Nice. Thank you. It is your turn, Garen. All right. Um, Well, now that that guy's dead... Is the uh, the other one still have a rider? Yeah, but you can't see them. They went way up into the sky. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, then I will use... Okay, well, first I will use... Well, let me move up. I move up five feet so I can blast... Um, can you see my ruler? I'll blast yep. these four guys Ooh. with Agonizer's Scorcher. Um, DC 17 dex save or take 12 fire damage. DC 17 dex. Okay. Yep. It's actually one of the few that they have something in. <laughs> I rolled an 11. So they Great. take 12 points. Uh, all of them take 12 points of damage? All of them take 12 each. Oh, dead. Nice. Dead, dead, dead. Woo. So we've got two up and standing near you at this point. Okay. Uh, what else um, are you doing? All right. Uh, I will use Big B's interposing hand and move it above me. So if anything tries to come down on top of me, it'll have to go through it first. 
Interesting. Yes. It's very creative. I like that. Okay. So you've got one soldier's going to, one of um, Marat Hull's soldiers is going to run up to Cam and try and hit him. And uh, 12 and a 12. So nope, misses there. Um, this other one here who's still standing next to the people you just scorched to death, Garen, is going to try and hit you with his longbow, but you are, oh, I got a critical. So take 12 points of damage. Okay. And then, um, then the other one with disadvantage, he rolls a 13, so it misses. Good. <laughs> Margraine Silverbeard, go ahead and give me a death save, buddy. Come on, that 20. No, that's a 10, though. Oh, okay. So two. Two death saves. Okay. Dulot. I- IRL. Dulot, it's your turn. <laughs> Dulot will drop his bow, do a misty step 30 feet to the tree trunk, and then run over to Margraine. And can I use an action to give Margraine one of his own health potions? Or would it be one two fine? on me. Yeah, yeah, like- yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll give him one of his own health potions. Oh, okay. Uh, you roll that for me, because I'm not rolling so hot today. <laughs> uh, what is your health potions you got? Uh, they're regular healing potions. 2d4 plus 2. It's better than being almost dead, man. So eight. Eight. Okay. Excellent. I'm up. Cool. Okay. So it's um, one of the ranger's turns now. The last ranger. It's just kind of like last time you guys met with Cam. Um, <laughs> we are bad luck. Oh, he's going to fire into that one who's still standing. Uh, it's 25 and 10 points of piercing damage. It kills him. Nice. So you know there are soldiers back there. You can still kind of see through the woods that there are the giants, uh, the giant soldiers, like the ones you fought before um, back in, um, what was the name of that town? Ash Hollow. But they're standing there and they're not moving. There's still some more of rot hole sta- soldiers standing back there. They're beating a drum slowly, but not moving. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's always the best sign. We're going to cut to Zalara again. <sighs> You see the people have crawled up the Great Plateau. They're fighting for their lives against Anatana and Marat Hall and Aruna and all their men. They can't win. The gods have already given, one god has already given his heart and that has helped them. The other gods slowly sacrifice themselves. One uses her blood and mixes it with the silver of the land. Another, they're twins. They rip crystals from their hearts and place it down. And finally, the emeralds of a goddess and her soul are all placed with the help of their men, their peoples, and Anat Ona is trapped in a different realm. You see a tower that had five fingers in the middle of the woods. Suddenly, it's just standing there as a tower. Those fingers are not sticking out anymore. All along the Great Isle, you see this band of five people, multiple races, and they use and they form these different elements so that Anat Ona is chained. There's one element that Shamhara created, and it's a heart heart you've seen before, pumping in the goddess tree, and you know now the other four have been broken. And with that, we'll call this episode. (sighs) Thanks for listening to episode 81 of Beholder's Eye Monk Tree Visions. We did some experimenting with this episode in uh, uh, that we incorporated a battle map, so I'm not sure how I feel about it upon hearing the end results. Love to hear your thoughts. Was uh, there not enough description? Did it work all right? Did you even notice? Um, We will be doing some more experimenting over the next few episodes. That's going to be more with the story aspect, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on that as well. Remember, if you want to support Beholder's Eye, our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Beholder's Eye pod. You'll find some cool stuff there. Get early released episodes and gain the ability to breathe underwater. If you can't support us financially but want to help out the show, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. Don't forget to check out our website, BeholdersEyeCast.com, and follow us on Twitter at BeholdersEyePod. You can follow Ryan, who plays Dulod, at the Third, Ben, who plays Garen, at Miro4D2. Kim, who plays Zalara at Mets Girl, and Sam, who plays Margraine at SamSlot007. Thanks, and we'll see you next week. Editing performed by Sam Canary. Music and effects editing by Benjamin Floyd. Music from filmmusic.io. Ossuary 5, Rest, Crowd Hammer, Rhino's Theme, Clash Defiant, Chase, Mystic Force, We Got Trouble, Mist on the Moor, 
Enter the maze, anxiety, curse of the scarab, and our journey begins by from the cloud and hopatech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0 license. CreativeCommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash by forward slash 4.0 forward slash sound effects by zapsblatt.com. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial Share Like 4.0 International License. CreativeCommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash by forward slash 4.0 forward slash.